Today looks nothing like our yesterday. With the integration of technologies, we'll be able to pool the expertise of great minds worldwide. We'll have instantaneous access to information that will solve problems a man. A child's life is saved because the knowledge of doctors nationwide is pooled and immediately accessible to a small town physician who is quickly able to diagnose As we shall see, a healthy child has achieved some significant outcomes during its four years of work, which started in 2006 and ended in April 2010 through the European Commission's ICT for Health funding mechanism of its framework program 6. During this period, there have been three public events in which healthy child results have been shown. Genova, Festival of Science in September 2007. Rome, the 140th anniversary of the Ospedale Pediatrico Bambino Gesù in September 2009. And in Sestri Levante in April 2010, the final conference of Healthy Child. As we shall see, Healthy Child brings a new light for the pediatric disease management. The focus of the project has been on congenital heart disease, arthritis and brain tumors in children. It has addressed the critical need to integrate, exploit and disseminate the knowledge of leading pediatric centers through advanced IT tools that allow the searching and matching of complex clinical cases. In 2008, the Healthy Child platform has won the best exhibition prize at Europe's largest information and communication technologies conference, the ICT 208 in Lyon, France. Healthy Child has shown the potential to become the world's leading pediatric network for biomedical information retrieval and analysis. Taken together, Healthy Child's developments will directly contribute to the European industry gaining competitive advantages in both medicine and information technology. Questo paziente aveva una tetralogia di fallò che comportava un'ostruzione. This patient suffers from what doctors call tetralogy of fallot. The flow of blood from the right ventricle in his heart to the pulmonary valve was partially blocked. He underwent surgery, the obstruction was eliminated and the right ventricle outflow was enlarged. But by doing so, the pulmonary valve was destroyed. Over time, that destruction causes a chronic flooding in the right ventricle. 
To prevent further danger to him, we must decide if and when we must perform new surgery to implant a new pulmonary valve. The disease is complex and cardiologists specializing with children often lack accurate, in-depth guidance on how to proceed. In a pilot experiment, Ugo's clinical data has been included in a new European-wide database. The network should allow Ugo's cardiologist to compare his case with other similar cases around Europe so they can share information and plan Ugo's treatment in a better way. So the network has confirmed that there is in Europe a patient quite similar to mine. It is patient number 57, a boy from London. If we open the database for this patient, we will be able to analyze his clinical details. Here, for instance, we have a 3D graphic reconstruction of his right ventricle. The network is still experimental and part of a European research project aimed at providing pediatricians with new tools to tackle not only heart disease but also brain tumours and rheumatism. The plan of this project is to build a database of biomedicine for pediatrics so different institutions all over Europe have access. Some cases are very rare and sharing knowledge with other institutions is very useful. One centre of excellence in the field of paediatrics is Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. At its Centre for Cardiovascular Imaging, dozens of patients like Ugo are scanned every year. The data is collected by cardiologists and cardiovascular imaging experts and it's all added to the Pan-Europe database. We scan them to look at uh, what the shape of the heart is, what the size of the heart is, what the size of the vessels that come out of the heart, but also importantly the function of the heart, how well it pumps, how much blood leaves the heart. And then we use that uh, information combined with the story of the patient, the examination of the patient and other imaging investigations such as echocardiography to decide how we should treat patients uh, um, and, and follow them up and manage them over time. Computer experts in the field like German scientist Martin Huber have a key role to play. He develops 3D graphics that help cardiologists to consider all surgery options. Graphics can help to determine if a patient needs full surgery or if a pulmonary valve can be implanted with new, less invasive techniques. Of course the heart beats, it is a moving object, and plus we have the additional problem with the children that the heart is not only smaller but it beats faster than an adult. And you imagine trying to take a picture of a hummingbird's wings in flight, that's about what we are trying to do. This is the biggest challenge imaginable for medical imaging, but current scanners, magnetic resonance imaging and computed tomography, we provide images of spectacular quality. Our task is to transform them and present them to the doctor. This is the basic idea. So we have some validated cases in our database. We have a new case. We look up which cases are similar and then we look at the outcome of these similar cases. Okay, so what are the advantages? This clearly is, an, is a method that relies heavily that we do have this grid, that we have a lot of validated high quality data at, at leading centers. It is very generic. The idea just compare to patient records is very generic. 
So actually we have done this with genetic data, we have done this with imaging data, compared imaging data, similar images, and also with clinical data. All you need basically is you have to define what is similar, what is your distance between two patients. And here we offer two possibilities. Either the clinician tells us, okay, for me ejection fraction is the most important thing. Show me similar patients with regards to ejection fraction. Or we can say, no, the system can learn something. So if we have validated data, we just give the validated data to the system and the system does the clustering, the classification for us. The more clinicians study patients, the more they discover that each patient is different. By comparing current patients to those in the recent past, clinicians will have further evidence to support their decisions. Thus, similarity searching could become the backbone of clinical decision support. The juvenile idiopathic arthritis study covered three main areas. The first goal was to improve current classification of juvenile idiopathic arthritis subtypes.